The gun control debate front and center in Washington. In a new op-ed by Illinois Representative Adam Kinzinger, he writes, quote, We have a gun violence epidemic, and we need to address it. We need to change some laws and change some hearts. He, he goes on to say that reg flag laws are important, but he's also calling for universal background checks for gun purchases, raising the age to purchase a firearm to 21, and banning certain high-capacity magazines like the one the Dayton, Ohio shooter used. Congressman Adam Kinzinger joins me now. Congressman, good to have you here. Um, tell me how long you've been thinking about these ideas and why you decided to put out this op-ed on Monday. Well, I, I spent the weekend kind of pondering this, and the thing that bothers me, I think, more than anything is whenever something like this happens, we have about a day of tragedy, and then we jump into our perspective corners. You know, us Second Amendment advocates, which I am, uh, jump to a set of conclusions that we won't budge from, and the left jumps to a set of conclusions. And ultimately, we have to kind of step outside of that kind of preconceived thing and say, what can we actually do to make a difference? And I think on the law side, you already have to be 21 to buy a handgun, by the way. Um, and what's happened is it was 18 to buy a long gun really before all these ARs and stuff started coming. So I think raise that to 21. You can have states with exceptions to say, you know, for a certain shotgun for hunting and whatnot mm -hmm. and protecting your home. But you have too many kids that have a grudge in high school or just out of high school, and we've seen it too many times where they go out, they can't buy a handgun, they buy an AR, and they come in and take that out. And so I think that's a realistic thing. I think background checks, the vast majority of gun purchases already go through background checks. So to say on private sales, you can do it in a way that's not overly encumbersome. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and then the left needs to understand this really is an issue of the heart. This is a spiritual rot in this country, a moral issue where we no longer value life and people feel like the only way they can be heard is to go out and make this name for themselves and then the media doesn't do any favors by publishing manifestos and publishing names. What kind of uh, response have you had from your constituents? You know, actually, it's, it's been pretty good. And, and I said from the beginning, I don't know what the political impact of me doing this is, and I don't care anymore. Um, you know, there are some that think I'm advocating too much, some that think I'm not advocating enough. And typically, I've learned if both sides of a debate are somewhat upset, you're probably mm -hmm. in the right spot. As a Second Amendment guy, um, we have to be willing to say, what can we do to help alleviate some of these issues to preserve our rights? Because that this next generation, I got to tell you, Dana, People think they're going to become conservative when they're older. They are very decided on this issue. And when they take power or they take a seat from me or something like that, it's going to be a very different outcome. I wonder what you think about um, President Trump's uh, remarks so far this week, um, or if you've even spoken to him. He said this about the appetite on certain weapons. Watch. I think there's a great appetite to do something with regard to making sure that mentally unstable, seriously ill, People aren't carrying guns. I, I've never seen the appetite as strong as it is now. I have not seen it with regard to certain types of weapons. The president saying that you know background checks, as you just said, something that a lot of people could agree on possibly. Um, but where do you, else do you think that the president might be able to push the Republicans in Congress to support something that the Democrats might also go for? I think the red flag laws, you know, there, every law that you put forward, there's going to be some instance where you can say this is unfair to somebody, and a red flag law is just like that. There could be people temporarily deprived of rights unnecessarily, um, and, and we should have mitigating factors in place for that. But as a society, you can never come up with a perfect solution, so the answer to that isn't to do nothing. It's to say, look, if, if somebody appears to be willing to go do things like shoot up a festival in California or Dayton uh, or somewhere in Texas, then you should be able to put a red flag on them and have that investigated. That's not an ending of due process. It's simply looking at it and saying, let's make sure this is safe. That's how we protect our mm -hmm. Second Amendment right. The president also said something about violent video games, and he was excoriated by the left, and he is absolutely right. We are training young people, and I'm not for banning them, but parents need to be aware. You are training young people to be able to pass that moral stop that doesn't allow them to shoot a person. You're training them to be able to shoot a person. 99.9% .9 of kids will not turn violent with that, but that 0.1% of kids 
will, and I have plenty of statistics. You know, we to had um, we Rod Breslow, time. who is a gaming uh, guy, and he was on, and he he definitely pushes back on the video game piece of it, which we could leave for another day. Um, point people to uh, my Twitter feed; we have that interview there to learn more about that. I want to get your take on this. Megan McArdle, she's a columnist for the Washington Post. She said something that I think is what you were saying, which is if tragedies like last weekend shootings keep happening at the current rate, the American public is eventually going to demand that the government take guns out of private hands. None of the firewalls that have worked thus far will hold. So if the right is interested in keeping its guns, it needs to get even more interested in finding an alternative policy that will actually work. I think some people, defenders of the Second Amendment, would say, but we are, the right is ours, given to us in the Constitution. Because some people abuse it, why do we then have to change our approach to that right? But how would you answer that? So I, I agree with all of the arguments, frankly. And, you know, it is unfair that you would deny somebody a right by putting a restriction in place because 99.9 percent, I own an AR, 99.99 percent of us are responsible with these guns. But as a society, we can't predict individual behavior. We have to make societal differences and changes. And this is one that I think can begin to make some of a difference. But I, I think the columnist is right which is attitudes are turning so much against the Second Amendment that the thing that we risk is that there will be a serious mm -hmm. movement to not just create restrictions, but to overturn the whole amendment. Now, by the way, your freedom of religion is protected by the first. If we begin to start to repeal the Bill of Rights, who knows where this whole thing goes. Um, Congressman, let me ask you one last thing. So Senator Chuck Schumer, the minority leader in the Senate, has basically said that the notion that passing a tepid version of basically a red flag law, extreme risk protection order, is even close to getting the job done in addressing rampant gun violence in the U.S. is wrong and would be an ineffective cop-out. Now, Marco Rubio was interviewed and he said, why wouldn't you at least try to do something rather than try to do everything all at once? Your thoughts on the legislative tactics of this before we let you go. So this is the problem. And, and de any Democrats watching need to hear me on this. When somebody says, when, the, when conservatives say we're willing to do something and the response is that's not enough, that builds into this argument that if we do anything, it's a slippery slope, and therefore we do nothing. I think we can do something and guard against the slippery slope, but that's if, if, if the problem is the first day we all go to our respective corners. If we can have some things that we agree on, why would we not try them? Because what I get hit by people is you want to raise the age of 21 to purchase assault rifles, you should ban assault rifles. I'm like, you're never going to win that argument with me. And then on the other side, people say you shouldn't do anything. We've got to just find things we can agree on and do them because right. there's people's lives at risk, and maybe this works. Right. Maybe you can't do everything all at once, Senator Schumer, but try at least this part. All right, Congressman Adam Kinzinger, we appreciate you coming on. Thank you. You bet. Thanks.